to Kali's lab. Today we're going to talk about crystallinity. All materials that you see around are either crystalline or amorphous. In crystalline materials, the atoms have some degree of arrangement. In the amorphous materials, there is disorder. Let's look at some crystalline materials. Here we see some labels that are arranged, they have a pattern, they have a form, they have a shape. The labels are stacked on top of each other. Here we see famous Spongebob. I love Spongebob. Awesome cartoon. Here we see some other arranged systems. So we could call them crystalline systems. And then here we see hmm, work in action. So we have a lot of pieces all over the place. We could say this is an amorphous system. There is no regular order. Just as the labels are arranged in different structures and give you different functionality, all atoms arranged in seven different types of crystal structures. The study of crystallinity is called crystallography. And it's an amazing, fascinating subject. You can change the arrangement of these atoms and the properties change dramatically. Let's first look at the seven different types of crystal structures. These are the seven different types of crystal structures. The most basic is cubic, where all the sides are of the same length and all the angles are equal to 90. Next one is tetragonal, where C is a little longer than all other sides. Then we have orthorhombic, hexagonal, monoclinic, and triclinic. And the atoms accommodate in these structures in different ways. For example, in the cubic, if we take one unit cell out of this lattice, then we can accommodate the atoms in the corners, only in the corners, or in the corners and one atom in the middle, or in the corners and atoms in the faces of all the different sides of the cube. And as long as the atoms accommodate in one of these seven crystal structures, you have crystallinity. You have a certain degree of crystallinity. In amorphous materials, just as this mess, well, it's not a mess, it's work in progress, there is no arrangement. For example, windows, they're called frozen liquids. Liquids have no arrangement. Let me tell you one material that is fascinating, and this is carbon. The carbon atoms, they can accommodate a cubic structure with atoms on the corners, atoms on the faces, and then they have some extra atoms that are pushed in between, and this would be diamond. It has amazing properties. Then we have graphite, pencil lead. This is also carbon. Do you pay thousands of dollars for this one? No. So why do you pay thousands of dollars for the diamond? It's the same atom. The situation is the atoms in here are accommodated in a hexagonal structure. Look at it. In simple terms, it has a basal plane, three atoms in the middle, and another basal plane, and it keeps on going up and up and up. The strength in between the different layers is very weak. And that is why you can write like that. Each time you're writing, you're delaminating the different layers of the graphite. Same thing with the charcoal that you use to grill. But it's the same carbon. Material science is an amazing area. Besides diamond, that somehow we find it like that in nature. We're not really manipulating the atoms. What else can we do? Can we change the atoms actually? Can we change the different crystal structures? Yes, we can. Knowing how atoms accommodate in the different crystal structures is very useful. You can fabricate a lot of different materials. For example, this is a nickel titanium alloy. You can see it's right now configured in a straight line. And if we bend it, we're deforming it. But I told you it's a shape memory alloy. With the application of some temperature, it's going to go back to the original shape. Why? These nickel titanium alloys are manufactured at high temperatures, assuming a cubic crystal structure, an austenite phase. Upon cooling, it goes into a martensite structure, which is a more complicated crystal structure, the monoclinic. When you have it in the monoclinic and you deform it, you're twinning the crystals. You're deforming the martensite structure. Upon heating, it remembers the shape that it had. It remembers that it was set as an austenite, and it goes back or it reverts into the cubic crystal structure, the austenite phase. It's amazing. We're getting it back into a straight line. The atoms inside are changing its crystal structure. We are manipulating crystal structures. Here, for example, I'm trying to do a K for Karen's lab. So I deform it again. So I have now a twin martensite um, crystal structure, a twin martensite face, 
Remember, the clips that you have in your house and all wires that you have laying around are not nickel titanium alloy, so don't start heating up materials left and right. Don't ever play with fire. This is just a special material. Here, for example, we have a spring. We have the spring with the formant. Once the formant, we heat it up a little bit and it goes back to the original shape. Again, the atoms are changing the way they are arranged and there's a different crystal structure. Wow, what applications can you think of? Let's say a car crash. There's a collision and the car deforms. Then you just apply heat and it will shape itself again as the same car. It, it's a neat application and it's not science fiction. It is amazing, isn't it? Crystallography is fascinating. You can alter the properties of all different materials. Now that you know that materials have a very special arrangement of atoms, what can you invent? See you in the next video.